Motaka bayala basete. Sobra shaka tamaya. Siba hasi kiti lama. Aya. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 22. Now you have to listen because this, I tell you, this is going to make a big difference in your life. Big, big difference. From verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. That's telling us that until he puts all that, all that down at the feet of the Father... He retains all rule, all authority, and power. Now, that's one of the reasons, see, that scripture, one of the reasons I, I cannot say and I do not accept when anybody says to me, X, Y, Z is what is reigning. I don't buy it. Because Jesus is reigning and I'm reigning with him. I, I don't accept it. You can't tell me such and such a thing is reigning. Doesn't matter how you put it. You can say this bag is what is raining. You can say that car is what is raining. That style is what is raining. I just can't accept it. See, this is something you've got to learn. You're a kingdom person. Do you understand? You belong in Zion. You're a kingdom child. You can't talk like the rest of the world. How could that be raining? There's only one king. See? We belong in his kingdom. We only recognize that kingdom. We refuse to accept another king. He's the only one that's reigning. Whether my bag or my shoes or my clothes or my school or anything is concerned, it is Jesus that's reigning. That's the way I see it. But you know what? I'll show you something. Now look at it. Look at it again. Verse 25. For he must reign. He must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. Until he has subdued all enemies. He must reign as king over them. Until they are subdued. He must reign over demons. Over the devils. Over hell. Over the grave. He must reign over sickness. Come on, somebody. He must reign over headaches, over cancer. He must reign over tumors. He must reign over everything until they are all subdued under his feet. He must reign. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Reign over poverty. Reign over lack and wants. That's what David meant when he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. He must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. Till they're all subdued and they have no more voice. No way to express themselves. As long as that tumor can express itself in my body, it's, it's against my reigning. So I refuse to accommodate that tumor. In the name of Jesus, the word of God reigns in me. I refuse to accommodate the tumor. I refuse. Oh boy. See what I mean when I say I love the word of God? He must reign. Jesus reigns in my bones. Jesus reigns in my blood. Jesus reigns in my skin. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet to the tips of my toes. Jesus reigns in me. Every fiber of my being, every cell of my blood, Kashandabaya. That's what he's talking about. He must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 
I want you to notice something. He didn't say the last enemy that shall be defeated. And look at all the enemies. They've all been defeated, but they still express themselves. And that's why he's reigning over them until they have no more voice. He says the last one is death. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at verse 27. For he had put all things under his feet. He's already done it legally, legally. He's already done I'm going to show you something in a moment. He's already done it. He had put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. In other words, God Almighty, God the Father, Papa God, is the only one who is not under the feet of Jesus. In other words, if you are not Papa God, whatever your name, whatever your name is, you are under the feet of Jesus by divine law. Make it personal. You understand? Make it personal. That's the only way it works. Make it personal. This is not written for the people in Bible days. L remember the words of Jesus. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. So his word is for every generation. Oh, I like it. All right now. Verse 17, Romans chapter 5. You would love this one. Hey, for if by one man's offense... You remember Adam? The Bible says Adam sinned and we all, we all, death passed upon all men. And we all became sinners. Because Adam sinned and we sinned in him. For he by one man's offense, death reigned, death reigned. Listen, death reigned, death reigned. Some of you have to change your names. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Now listen, listen, listen. It's so important. Listen. A man by the name of Abram encountered God one day. His name was Abram. Abram meant exalted father, meaning assumed father. One who was taken to be father even though he was not father. Now he didn't have any child. But he had 300 servants born in his house. Are you hearing this? So God spoke to him and said, Abram, I will bless you and make you a blessing. He believed that, but he believed it mentally. In other words, he put it in his head. He hadn't received it in his spirit. Until one day, God said, come, number the stars if you can. And the man came out in the night time and he began to say, one, two, oh, one, two, three, oh. Then he said, Lord, the many. Then God said, so shall thy seed be. When God said that to him, the Bible says for the first time, he says, and Abram believed. When he believed, God said, now, I'm going to change your name. You will no longer be called Abram, but Abraham, which means father of many. Because God saw it, God knew that with your name, Oh, your name is your destiny. You've got to understand it. Every time you find God changing the name, he changes it because of your destiny. Your name is your destiny. Understand it. Jacob was called Jacob just because when he was born, he got his brother's um, heel by his hand. So his father jokingly looked at him and said, your name shall be called Jacob. Jacob means swindler. Swindler. Fast guy. Forward now, you understand that? Better. Fast guy, swindler. That's the meaning of the, the name Jacob. And what did he do? He stole his brother's birthright, deceived him by aid of his mother. You see that? In life, he had become a fast guy, swindler, until he encountered God. The angel came to him and said, Jacob! The Bible says he wrestled with Jacob all night. And then at the break of day, the angel wanted to depart. And Jacob said, no, bless me. I won't let you go until you bless me. No, bless me. The angel said, I cannot bless you. You know why? He said, why? He said, tell me, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. That's why I can't bless you. You're Jacob. 
God cannot bless Jacob until his name is changed. Your name is your destiny. Do you understand? A man by the name of Jabez. When he was born, his mother, when his mother gave birth to him, it was in time of sorrow. So the mother called him Jabez, meaning sorrow, son of sorrow. When he grew up, his life was bitter. His life was terrible. One day he cried out to God. He said, oh God, bless me. Change my destiny. His destiny could not be changed without a change of his name. When Jesus encountered Peter, he was called Simon, meaning a reed shaken by the wind. Unstable, that means. So he called him Simon. That was his name. Simon went around with Jesus. But as Simon, he could not follow God. He could not walk with Christ. One day, Jesus asked his disciples, whom do men say that I am? See, because on God cannot change your name until there is an act of faith on your part. You must respond to him by faith. Otherwise, even when you change your name by yourself, it will not work. So you change it when you hear the word of God and say, By God, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to answer this name anymore. I take on this other name. You do it in the presence of God and in heaven it's recorded. And the destiny of your former name is cancelled. Are you hearing what I'm telling you now? Jesus said, Whom do men say that I am? They said, some say that you're Jeremiah. Some say that you're uh, one of the prophets. Jesus said, whom do you say that I am? The Bible says Peter spoke up. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus said, flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my father. Then he said, and I say to you, you are Peter. This guy was called a reed. Mr. Unstable. He was called... Simon John. His father's name was John. The Greek version of his is Jonas. That's John. Simon John. And Jesus said, Simon, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father. And I say to you that you are Peter. Meaning, Peter means, uh, let me show you. Have you, ever, have you ever dashed your foot against a stone on the ground? You thought it was a little stone and you probably tried to remove it only to find out there was a bigger thing in the ground. So that little stone that you saw on the top surface was just the little thing showing up that's founded on a bigger rock inside the ground. That small one that's founded on the big one is called Peter. You understand? That's Peter. That's what Jesus called Peter. That's the meaning of Peter. Peter is not a little it's a stone you pick up. Peter is a little stone that's founded on a big one. He said, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Change this name. I don't know what they call you. I don't know what your mother called you or your papa called you. If that name is not consistent with the word of God, don't take it. Some of our native names all over this country particularly, a lot of them ought to be changed. Don't be afraid to change them. They ought to be changed. Listen, your name is your destiny. You can answer a name that crowns evil in your home. Because all up until this time, you were ignorant. Now you have heard. Now that you have heard, you have to act on it. You have to reject that name. And the name that you choose to now call yourself is the name that God will call you. I'll give you a scriptural example. Was called Saul. And then he picked up a guy named Paul. Meaning small. Because he was small in stature. He wasn't a big fellow. He was small in stature. So they called him Paul and he called himself Paul. Now before then, when Jesus spoke out of heaven and called him, he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He was called Saul. But then he picked up this name that he was answering everywhere, Paul. It wasn't God who gave him Paul. He liked the name. And then guess what? The next time Jesus showed up, he called him Paul. So I'm telling you, God will call you what you call yourself. So in other words, that name that you were given, you've been answering it in the realm of the spirit. After all, you used to write it down as one of your names. It's your name. So in heaven, you are known as Whatever it is. 
So your name is your destiny. Make sure you change it. You say, why did Paul give himself that name? I'll tell you why. This man was a man that was given an abundance of revelations. He was in Arabia. Three years. Where God showed him so many things. And right after that experience, he decided to see himself small in the sight of God and before others. It was a name of humility. That's why he called himself Paul. He says, because of the abundance of revelations that was given unto him, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet him, lest he'd be exalted above measure. There's so much to be said about that. I could preach for you a whole month. But here we are in 17th verse of Romans, the fifth chapter. For if by one man's offense death reigned, death reigned. Now he's not, he's not telling that it's reigning. He says death reigned. It did then. It did. It did. But that's before Jesus came. It did. Remember, first epistle of St. John, chapter 3, verse 8. He says, for this purpose... The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Then the Bible says that he became one of us. He became subject to death. Such that through death, 14th chapter, Hebrews chapter 2, 14th verse, Hebrews chapter 2, that he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Now he says, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more, much more than death reigned, much more. They which receive, oh, oh glory to God. They which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. They which receive abundance of grace. Who are they? He's talking about us. He says the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. They which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Who are they that have received the, the gift of righteousness? He's talking about us. He's talking about us. Righteousness is a gift. He says, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in this life. They shall reign. Really amplified. They shall reign as kings in this life, he says. They shall reign as kings in this life. He's not talking about heaven. You're not going to have subjects in heaven. You're not going to be reigning over demons in heaven. They shall reign. How? Remember. What we read in the 25th verse of the 15th chapter, 1 Corinthians. He must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. 